I was just getting ready to chat a little bit about this dog that's walking out. We'll wait for him to come back. This is the skittish dog that uh, has been feeling confident about biting people. And we'll wait for him to come back through. All right, this is the one I'm talking about. Don't talk when I'm talking. This is the one that I'm talking about. He has those eyes. You see the eyes and the ears? This is that puppy that when he was young looked up at you with those eyes and would say, Oh, I'm going to take him home with me. Not understanding that he had some behavioral issues. Look at the tail. Okay? Not understanding that he had a behavioral issue. That, see that look there? That's the same way he looks when someone walks into the door of their home and he feels threatened and he goes up to bite them. Come on. That's that look he has. This is fear. This is genetic. This is one of the most difficult of all the cases because we don't know exactly where it came from. But I know it comes from the fear imprint period when this dog was young. And so what happens is, so what happens is the owner or the potential adopter sees this dog, sees this look, brings it home and showers it with love and affection, rewards this behavior, this genetic predisposition. We reward it. You see this look? And so he becomes confident in feeling fearful. Let me say this again. A dog can become confident in feeling fearful. That's not the problem, really. The problem is when we take this dog that's like this and it feels confident with feeling fearful because of the love and affection that the human does, and then we start playing tug of war and roughhouse. We start telling them what to think and how to feel and what to do when they're in this state of mind. That's what we're doing. And we're asking them to challenge us as their leader. And so we become representative of other people. And so they learn to be assertive and dominant towards other people. They become emboldened. And so if it's a man that's doing it, they generally will be aggressive and they bite, bite men, strangers. They will also do it to women because it's a people thing and they feel that this is how we treat people. Once this happens a number of times, it becomes embedded in the dog where it becomes a learned behavior. And it's very difficult to get it out of them because the human being tries love and affection, which was the original thing that produced the okay green light for the fear in the first place. And so this dog is with me uh, because I don't pay attention to that. I don't see him looking like this with those eyes. Let's see if we can get them. With those eyes looking up and those ears back something that I want to touch. That I'm saying, okay, I'm going to love this out of you. No, I know that the only thing that I can do is reward this thing if I do the positive or effective. Now this guy will walk around the house all day long looking sad, and to the human being, it'll make us think that we need to make him feel happy. And the way to do that is to do more subordinate behavior, which actually increases this more and more and more. So we're at a dilemma now with how do we save this dog? Well, I know that this is not a problem. I know that this is genetic. I know that it's not the genetic problem. It's what he learns to do with that genetic predisposition. But if the human being uh, learns to deal with adversity with positive reinforcement the way we would deal with a child, then we're going to be in trouble because we can't help this guy. He needs something a lot different to happen with him. 
He needs more understanding. He needs someone to understand what a dog with a genetic predisposition to be like this needs. And you know what they need? They need consistency. They don't need to be given positive reinforcement when they're feeling this way. So this is about time. Uh, I'm not making him come to me yet. I just want him to get used to just being around me. You see? Then I'm going to tell him to come. But I just want to fill you in on how this thing starts off. And how we can create a problem for ourselves thinking that we're solving one for them. So we'll continue.